I'm going to read this essay of a student who got into USC's Masters of Computer Science program with a focus on artificial intelligence. As I read it, I'll pause and make comments on some of the things that work really well in this essay and the techniques that you can borrow in your own essays. You can always come to my office hours to get help on your essays. Let's dive in. When the world was still operational and social distancing was merely a metaphor, I embarked on a journey that galvanized me towards my goal of engineering socially conscious solutions for problems historically driven by human intuition, cognition, and expertise using data science and artificial intelligence. This journey is a source and foundation of my interest to continue my academic enrichment by pursuing a master's degree. My tryst with data science started in my sophomore year at Blank University with a video I watched about an accent coach describing the nuances in cadence, pitch, and intonation of different accents around the world. As the video played, my mind wandered and thought about virtual assistants and their speech discerning abilities. Specifically, I wondered what could explain Call Devi turning into Call of Duty when announced with my parents' South Indian accent. This piqued my interest to leverage data science, speech processing, and machine learning to help identify accents that characterize speech. Venturing guesses soon turned into discovering and learning about data science and the application of machine learning in solving my problem. I caught myself consciously and unconsciously devoting my undergraduate studies to the praxis of these concepts. So what works really well in this essay is how specific this person is right up front about what their interests are in computer science. We see this excellent example about voices and how we talk and how that plays into artificial intelligence. And we know upfront where this person's interests lie. One of the biggest problems I see in reading essays, especially for masters of computer science, is people are not very specific in what their interests are. They're like, I wanna work at Google and I'm interested in everything. And that's not gonna get you into a graduate program. You really need to be specific with where your interests lie and what you wanna explore further in a master's program. I decided to identify and differentiate between Indian accents and North American accents in voice recordings. I employed speech analysis tools to break down the differences between the accents and machine learning algorithms to model the differences. I posited a modification to the fabric of the input to the machine learning algorithm, which increased the accuracy of detection of the different accents by 5.5%. Under the guidance of blank professor, I wrote my first technical paper and presented it at the International Conference for Artificial Intelligence and Data Engineering in 2019. The proceedings were published in the Springer Lecture Series, Advances in Intelligent Systems and Computing. The following semesters, I bolstered the fundamentals I acquired over the summer by enrolling in several courses in the spectrum of data science, deep learning, and natural language processing, and applied my learnings in, in subsequent projects. Here again, we see some great specifics. We first heard, here's what the interest is, and then now we're hearing, how do you apply and approach that work of your interest? In this case, working on the differences between accents. Here we see that they wrote a paper. Here we see that they worked on speech analysis tools, and when they put that into the machine learning algorithm, they had this outcome of being able to improve the accuracy by 5.5%. So that's a win here where we see that. And in showing examples of the work you've done, you wanna be able to point to wins, point to outcomes. And then we see an even bigger win here that their work was presented in this paper and um, published here, which is an awesome win. So anytime you can point to an outcome of the work you've done, you wanna do that strongly because it that's evidence that you know your stuff, you know what you're doing. Eager to explore the role of data science and analytics in the real world, I interned at Blank Company for two months where I worked on operationalizing property and casualty insurance claim analytics, which would reduce the time and effort that goes into managing claims, the most significant expense to any insurance company. I developed a predictive analytic solution to forecast the severity of an insurance claim made by a policyholder to aid in the determination of insurance premium for the subsequent renewal cycle. The end-to-end -end pipeline involved demarcating the impactful attributes and developing a severity model by comparing different algorithms, parameters, and metrics. I created a wireframe that the company would be able to adopt to accelerate decision-making by not having to rely solely on individual experience and professional judgment. Here we see another example of their work and their interests that they have. When it comes to an essay, you know, there's many projects that you've worked on. You probably want to highlight 
you know, three projects in detail that you've done that you've had strong outcomes for. If you have more space to write, like this is a two page, 1200 word essay, then you can describe more projects, but you don't necessarily need to describe every project you've ever worked on because A, you'll have your resume to help with that. And B, you want to describe projects that are going to show your interests and your ability. So pick the best projects you've worked on that are going to make the best case for you getting into this grad program. Continuing my journey to work on on problems reliant on domain knowledge and high human intervention, I worked with Professor Blank for 11 months on cutting and research in the field of bioinformatics and molecular informatics. I worked on research that finds application in, in drug repositioning and the artificial synthesis of drugs, which heavily rely on domain knowledge, years of effort, and millions of dollars. The crux of the project involved determining the therapeutic class of a drug given information about its function, gene expression, or structure. Simplified molecular input line entry system, i.e. SMILES, a textual representation of the molecular structure. During the first six months, I worked on creating a triple network, an architecture gaining popularity in the image processing sphere that models gene expression data. The network performed well. However, due to resource and time constraints, it could not be developed enough to surpass the performance of the current benchmark. So I pivoted. The following months, I worked on creating architectures inspired by natural language processing to model the structure of the drug. I found that previous research in this niche focused on predicting the chemical and physiological properties of known drugs. With the advent of synthetic drug discovery, a system which relied solely on a universal identifier like a drug structure would be a significant push for data-driven drug discovery and drug repositioning. This was the precedent for Blank Project, a suite of tools to aid in and serve as a benchmark for classifying drugs into overarching functional groups purely based on the chemical structure. The networks of Blank Project predict the anatomical therapeutic chemical classification established by the World Health Organization with accuracies as high as 80%, which is five times higher than the baseline classification. My co-author and I presented Blank Project at the 2020 Fifth International Conference on Research in Computational Intelligence and Communication Networks, and our work is set to be published in IEEE Explore. This is another great example of this person's experience. We see in this paragraph that they have a diversity of experience. They really know what they're talking about. And we see another win here with this example of this project, which has an 80% accuracy and being able to present their work at this conference. So you see here, there's strong examples that show the caliber of this person's work. One of the biggest problems I see in master's in computer science statements of purpose is not enough experience where, you know, people are like, well, I took these courses where I learned these programs, but you're not actually describing any wins. Like what did you do with that knowledge? How did you apply the use of those skills and then those techniques to develop something to, um, produce an outcome that often tends to be missing and maybe you don't have enough experience yet to be applying to a master's in computer science and i'm showing you this example to see this is the level of experience people have going into applying so if you've only done um, coursework where you haven't been able to demonstrate um, your your skills and your abilities and having these kinds of wins then you may need to gain more experience in the field before you apply to a master's in computer science because everyone applying is going to have a lot of examples like this Um, and you may need to bolster your experience first. During my last semester at college, I interned at Goldman Sachs while simultaneously pursuing my research with Professor Blank. Throughout my year of research and corporate work experience, I engage in an internal dialogue about the ways architectures can shift paradigms not only in their intended field of application but in seemingly unrelated spheres. I watched how natural language processing powered a molecular informatics project, how image processing lent itself to genomics, how machine learning automated something as intuitive as discerning an accent, how data analytics transformed a financial institution. I hope to leverage this transcendent nature of computer science as a whole in my career as an engineer. 
all while being mindful of the social ramifications of non-inclusive algorithms operating at a large scale. In a world run by massive AI giants and startup bubbles, the race to get the best product out blinds us to the ramifications of bias systems. I want to engineer socially conscious, inclusive solutions to problems that might seem commonplace, like the non-comprehension of my accented speech by virtual assistants and those that are critical, like the diagnosis of a pneumonia-like illness in historically disadvantaged minorities. I want to continue working in data analytics and machine learning while expanding my portfolio to work on the social implications of scalable artificial intelligence to abate encoded social bias in today's AI algorithms. This is my motivation to pursue a master's of science in computer science, artificial intelligence at the University of Southern California. These two paragraphs right here are critically important because they show us who this person is and what this person cares about, that they're interested in reducing unconscious bias that shows up in artificial intelligence. And there's many examples of this in our technology, you know, like the racial profiling that happens in technology, all that kind of stuff. And this person saying, hey, this is a problem and I want to do something about it makes this person stand out to me. Like if I'm on an admissions committee, I'm thinking, yes, this is uh, an awesome thing you want to pursue. And I want to support you in pursuing that because I think that people who think that way should be leaders in this field. Um, and so this makes that person stand out. What I would have done if I was this person um, is I actually would have made this paragraph, I would have made it the intro paragraph because it so clearly sets up what this person cares about. Um, and I think as an intro, it would have been stronger than what they have. You know, what they have is fine, but this would have made them stand out at the get go even further because um, it's a really great paragraph that highlights what this person cares about. Um, and when you are writing your essays, you want to think about um, what in the bigger, broader sense of the world is the thing that you care about that you want to move forward in the world. And it doesn't need to be something that is, um, you know, changing social inequities, but it could be something that is important to you and the kind of work that you want to do. So think about what is it that you care about and how do you want to use technology to move forward the thing you care about and make that very clear and explicit in your essay because that shows who you are as a person and, and that's gonna make you stand out from the other candidates because not everybody cares about the same things you care about and that's a way you can kind of make yourself stand out from the pack. The profundity of the curriculum and research conducted at the Verdeby School of Engineering is perfectly positioned to prepare me for a career in AI sensitive to social inclusivity and trust. I am excited at the possibility to learn from and work with professors who are at the heart of innovation, working on pioneering research. I relate to the work on speech recognition specific to non-native speech and inclusivity at the Signal Analysis and Interpretation Laboratory as it aligns with my motivation and with earlier work in the field. Courses like speech recognition and processing for multimedia will solidify my foundation and allow me to improve my work in the field and take it to scale. Working with Professor Blank at USC and professors at the USC Center for Artificial Intelligence and Society on fair and interpretable machine learning would be a great conduit to my goal of creating socially conscious intelligent systems for problems driven by human expertise and sensitive to bias. So this last paragraph very specifically ties what this person wants to do to the resources at USC. And this is something that you need to make crystal clear in your essays. What do you want to do and how is that university set up to make you successful in what you want to do? And throughout all this person's essay, we see them coming back to the same theme around uh, language and looking at language and accents in um, artificial intelligence. And then we see that USC has a whole center to do that. They have uh, classes specific to that. They have professors who that's what they're working on. And that makes USC a really great fit for this person. Um, and I'm sure that's the reason, you know, why this person um, is going to that school. 
And this is a big mistake I see in a lot of essays where people are not being clear on why that school is a good fit for what they want to do. So you want to make sure you go through the curriculum, you go through professors, you go through the resources that they have at that university to understand what are the resources they have and how do those resources match up to what you want to do. And to summarize what makes this a great essay is that it's very specific on what the person wants to do, what they're interested in. It highlights the diversity of their skill set and multiple examples of them being successful um, at applying what they know and being able to present at conferences and uh, you know improve the accuracy in their machine learning, all that stuff. So it has lots of great examples and it's really clear that the university is a really great fit for what they want to do. So take those lessons into your essays, be specific, show examples that show the amazingness of the work that you've done and be very clear and specific in how the university is going to support you in being successful in the career you want to have. If you want feedback on your essays, you can come to my free monthly office hours or my private office hours, and you can also download a PDF of some of my sample essays uh, in the links below in the description.